My name is Beauty. This is my story. tell you how pleased I was to receive your letter. You say the ship's due to dock at any time, Mr. Turkington? Yes, sir, do I gather it's in desperate need of repair. Badly damaged in the storm, it were. Extremely lucky to make it back at all. I say, there it is, heading into harbour. There's my... ship. Ship. I'm ruined. My family's fortune now confirmed lost. Returning through the gathering storm that night, fate dealt my poor father another terrible blow. He became both sick at heart and extremely confused. This, in turn, caused him to lose his way by taking a wrong turning on that long, lonely road home. <laughs> and cold in the storm, when Father thought nothing else could go wrong, it did. father survived the accident. For several hours, he stumbled through the storm, trying to find shelter. Once inside, Father found himself in an outer hallway, which seemed to lead to a series of large rooms deep in the castle. Hello? I 
say, is there anyone here? Oh, uh, my word. Odd. No one here. Hello? Good heavens. Anyone here? It was as though an invisible host had been expecting father. The table had been set for one, and a fine meal served ready to eat. Pity me! surprise, he found his mysterious host had considerately left a set of fine new clothes for him to wear on his journey home. And beside his bed, a cup of hot chocolate for his breakfast. Oh, golly gosh! Oh, how lovely! Well, thank you! Whoever... Uh... Wherever you uh, are. Uh, <laughs> Outside the castle, as he prepared to leave, Father then found himself in a beautiful garden. Seems wrong not to thank such a kind host, but if you can't find the host, what is one to do? Ah, lovely. Roses. Just what the doctor ordered. I'll take one home for dear beauty. She'll be thrilled. Hospitality, and then you steal from me. For that, you ungrateful thief, you must die. Die? Oh, no, please. No, I beg you. No, no I, I am grateful for your hospitality, um, sir, but 
but I just couldn't find you to thank you. Please, please believe me. It changes nothing. You stole from me, thief. Death will be your reward. I didn't steal for myself. It was for my lovely daughter. I couldn't afford to buy her one. That's the truth. I swear it. Oh. A daughter, you say? Yes, sir. Her daughter. Two daughters, actually. Ruana and Beauty. Lovely girls. I see. Very well, thief. Perhaps you may not die. Just yet. I will grant you three months. Three months? To do what? To send one of your daughters here to take your place. Of her own free will. But I can't do that! Oh, yes you can. You have three months to do it. But... but... But nothing! If your daughter does not appear within that time, you will be struck down dead. Do you understand? Uh, yes. Uh, whatever you say, sir. Uh, three months. A uh, daughter. Uh, yes, of course. Uh, anything. Uh, can I go now? Yes, yes, go! Go before I change my mind, you thieving scoundrel! Take the rose and get out of my sight! give my family such news after all we've been through these last months. Oh, it's almost too much to bear. Three months earlier, our family lived in very different circumstances. But that was before. Wonderful party! Ma 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 marvelous pe 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 people. Oh, Rowanner, you looked so beautiful last night. I should jolly well hope I look beautiful Every night, beauty. Hmm. I didn't mean that. I, I meant... Uh, what beauty meant was that you looked even more beautiful than ever at your engagement party last night, Joanna. Uh, didn't you, my dear? Y yes, Papa. I did. I, 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 I say, say, everyone, I, I've never so, so seen so much wealth in one room as I so, 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 so saw here last evening. <laughs> Money coming out of their ears. How kind of people, eh, Julius, my dear? Uh, Soon-to-be brother-in-law? How kind of people? What? Uh... Yes! <laughs> <laughs> I'll say. <laughs> I must say, Maxwell, you and Rowanna made a splendid couple last night. Let me say again, welcome to the Van Oxley family. <laughs> Thank you, Sir Dale. Again, it's not every day a mere banker like myself is invited to marry into one of the country's wealthy, uh, <laughs> most notable merch <laughs> families. Yeah, well, Maxwell, money isn't everything, you know. It's what you are that counts. I was lucky as much as anything else. It could all go tomorrow, you know. Jolly well, hope not. I'd have to get a job. Touch wood and all that rot, eh, Julius? Yes, I'll say. I say, who could that be? We're not expecting anyone, are we, Mary? Uh, no, sir. Unless it's Turkington, the ship's chandler. Hmm. Turkington. Terribly sorry to bother you on a Sunday, sir. I've come straight from the docks. There's been a terrible, terrible storm. Oh, Lord. I hope you're not going to tell me. Afraid so, sir. Oh. Reports are that all three of your ships have been sung off the Ivory Coast. And the crews... lost. No. Oh, no. Oh. Have to... sell the house. My poor, loving father was ruined in the tragedy. All of his wealth was contained in the three ships that took those poor souls to their watery graves. There was little I could do but just be there for him. For my dear sister, Rowanna, the news could not have been worse. Overnight, she had become the daughter of a poor man. And within a day, Maxwell had cruelly broken off his engagement to her because of it. I was going to be a banker's wife. How could he? And for poor Julius, who had never done a day's work in his life, 
the news sent him into a decline from which I truly believed he would never recover. I'll have to find... Work! Within just a few short, painful weeks, our dear father was made to sell our house to pay his business debts. And we were forced to move away to the country, where father rented a small cottage, which was to become our new home. Father recovered sufficiently to begin accepting his new circumstances. But poor Rowena and Julius, it still seemed their lives had suddenly ended. Cheer up, Rowena. Things might be a lot worse. We could all be dead, you know. <laughs> Father, we are dead. The good thing is, Julius, you and I will be sharing a bedroom at the cottage. We can spend time discussing what career you might take up. And I will plant a vegetable garden. And I will grow beautiful flowers. I will never forget that journey. Mary, who volunteered to housekeep for us without pay, and I was sitting behind the others, talking about the future. If someone had told what it held for me, I would never, ever have believed them. We... we can't leave on sir, 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 soup? Uh, I assume the soup's only the first course, Mary. Yes, it is, Sir Dale. Oh, good. And the uh, second? Uh... Large sausages, sir. That's all we could afford. Oh. Van Oxley's eating turnip soup and lard sausages. Oh, heaven forbid. It's excellent soup. Thank you, Mary. We should all be grateful we've got anything on our table. There are families all over the country who have nothing to eat. <laughs> you, you, you mean the pa 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 Yes, she means the poor Julius. Us. But, 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 but we, we're not p -p 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 poor p people. Oh, yes, we are. Meet the disgusting Van Porpers. I could not really blame Rowanna and Julius. They did not know any better. But unfortunately, their behavior began affecting our dear father's health. From Mr. Turkington. Not more bad news, I hope. <laughs> Happy to report that one of your vessels has survived the storm after all and is due in port in three days from now. I may not be ruined after all. Rather! Well, I'm not entirely certain, but if, if enough cargo has survived the storm, I can sell it. Uh, then we could all return to the city, buy back the house, and resume our former lives. What do you think of that? Wonderful, Father. Oh, we could even invite dear Maxwell over for tea again. Uh, and, I, and I could start playing backgammon again with my father friends every day. <laughs> Well, I'd like to buy a little something, not too expensive here, for each of you while I'm in town. If I can afford it, what would you like? A yard of the finest oriental silk, Father. Mary can make me a lovely dress for when Maxwell comes over to see us. A, a, a fob watch for me, Father. A gold one. Uh, <clears throat> well, I'll see what I can do. Beauty, my dear. What would you like? Um, nothing, Father. 
It's enough for me that one of your ships has come back. <laughs> it's better than any gift. You're a sweet girl, beauty. Like a flower. Flower? Of course. I'll buy you one. What about a beautiful red rose, eh? Oh, thank you, Father. I'd like that very much. <laughs> went with Father as he set out on that fateful journey to the docks. So much depended on the outcome of it. But if he too had known what was ahead, he would never have believed it. That evening, I went to sleep uneasily. The words of my last conversation with poor, unhappy Rowanna still ringing in my ears. I was afraid for my family if Father did return empty-handed. As Julius and I are concerned, if Father doesn't return with his money, he needn't bother coming back! And then, the most extraordinary thing happened. A feeling of great peace and happiness suddenly came over me as I slept. A beautiful, mysterious face appeared before me and began speaking to me. Do not be afraid, Beauty. Do not be afraid. The true place of love will be revealed. Great joy awaits you. Do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. Love revealed? Oh, uh, uh, I must have been dreaming. If there's one thing I hate, it's people who jabber in their sleep. I'm sorry, Rowena. I just had the most beautiful dream. Did Father arrive home in this dream with a coach full of beautiful money? Um, no. Then it wasn't a dream. It was a nightmare. Be quiet and go to sleep, Beauty. So, 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 so you mean we're still pa 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 poor? Uh, but at least the uh, <clears throat> beast uh, allowed me to take the rose. Here, beauty, you. It's a little worse for wear, I'm afraid. Oh, thank you, dear father. What? Thank you for almost having father murdered just to get your present? That's most unfair, Rowanna. No, it's not. Why didn't you steal something valuable, Father? Like silk or a gold fob watch for Julius and me, instead of a wilting old rose for Beauty. <laughs> Rowanna! Beauty, you realize what you've done, don't you? You've practically caused Father's death. This is all your fault! Rowanna, no one's going to die over this. I'll simply go back and discuss it rationally with the Beast. He may even have changed his mind completely. No, Father. You can't go back by yourself. He has magic powers. He'll kill you. I feel certain of it. Well, then so be it. At least I'll have kept my word. I'm certainly not allowing one of my daughters to take my place. I wouldn't go in a fit, even if you did, Father. I'll go. I'll go to the Beast in your place, Father. No, Beauty. I won't let you. Your life is far more precious than my own. I have never disobeyed you, Father. Ever. But my mind is made up. I will go. Then if you go, my dear, I'll come with you to make sure you're safe. Uh, oh, go goody. And I'll still stay here to m make sure I'm s s safe. <laughs> Father and I returned to the castle just a day short of three months later. It was as though the beast knew to the minute when we were to arrive.
We could feel his powerful presence in that room. But for reasons best known to himself, the beast chose not to reveal himself immediately. <laughs> Superb peasant, I must say, beauty. Yes, father. It's lovely. I should have been afraid. We were in the vast den of a monster who had threatened to kill my father. But I kept hearing the comforting voice of my dream. Do not be afraid. The true face of love will be revealed. Great joy awaits you. Do not be afraid. Here's to our good health, beauty. <laughs> Seen fit to save your miserable neck, have you, thief? My father is not a thief. He is a merchant and a man of honor who values his word above all. That is why he is here tonight. No. He is here only because he would have died tomorrow had he stayed away. No. He came only to accompany me. I have chosen to take his place. You have chosen? of your own free will to come here? Yes. You may do with me what you wish. As long as my father may go free. No, beauty! Quiet thief! <gasps> Are you prepared to die in place of your father? Yes. If that is what you plan for me. No! No, no, I will not... Silence! <laughs> In the morning, you will say farewell to your daughter and leave this place forever. You will never hear from her again. Forever. No. Forever. No. Forever. The brute's gone. Oh, I'm sure he hasn't gone far, Father. I went to sleep that night with the fearful words of the beast ringing in my dreams. Say farewell to your daughter and leave this place forever. Forever! Forever! Then, yet again, a feeling of great peace and happiness suddenly came over me, and the same mysterious face appeared before me. Dear Beauty, only someone as pure of heart as you would die for their father. And for this, the true face of love will be revealed. Great joy awaits you. Do not be afraid. Beauty, my sweetest daughter, I cannot. I can't. <laughs> Father, I am not afraid. I have been given a message in my dreams. Just dreams. Beauty, I can't believe in them. <laughs> I do. No harm will come to me. I'm certain of it. Now go. And have faith, dear father. Please. Very well, Beauty. But if anything happens to you, I will curse myself for the rest of my days. Goodbye, my dear. A daughter was never more precious and more loved than you. After Father departed, the beast remained invisible. Yet there were signs everywhere that he was there, watching me. A harpsichord was left for me to play. And there were books to read. And in my room, as though by magic, I found new clothes and shoes. And a box of priceless jewels for me to wear. I soon realized I was free to move in and around the castle. From this, I knew the beast did not intend to take my life. Otherwise, why would he be so kind to me? That night... 
I sat alone in the great dining hall. The strange events of the previous day running through my mind. Suddenly, I knew the beast was there. I leave again. You, you need only say. No, stay. Thank you. I, I want you to be happy here, beauty. It would cause me pain if you were not. Is everything to your liking? Yes, it is. Thank you. I don't know what to call you. I am Beast. Beast. Is, is that not obvious by my ugliness? P perhaps. But your heart, it must be kind and good, Beast. The clothes and jewels you left for me today. They are nothing, Beauty. All of this is yours. Mine? If only you would marry me. Marry you? From the moment I first saw you, I fell deeply in love with you. No, don't... I beg you to marry me, Beauty. Please, dear Beast, I cannot marry you. Oh, no! 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 Without meaning to, I had wounded Beast terribly, and it was not to be the last time either. Each evening for the next three months, Beast came to the dining hall with exactly the same request. I beg you to marry me, Beauty. And each time, I was forced to give exactly the same reply. Please, I cannot marry you. Cannot marry you. Cannot marry you. No! Beauty. For you. Oh, thank you, Beast. You're very generous. I am also very lonely. You will not love and marry me because of the way I look. <laughs> It was true. I could not marry Beast because of his appearance. And yet, as time passed, I began thinking of it less and less. And the warmth of his beautiful heart more and more. Even so, I could still only be his companion and friend, not his wife. That night, the mysterious face appeared again. But this time, it left me in deep anguish. Beauty, your loving father lies in his sickbed, pining for you. He will die unless you go to him as quickly as you can. As quickly as you can. Oh, oh, father. Oh, no. No, no. me to go to my father at dawn the next morning. He could not bear to see the pain news of father's illness had caused me. But, Beauty, you must promise to come back in eight days. There will be catastrophe if you fail to do so. Yes, Beast. Eight days. I, I promise. Take this ring and wear it. On the eighth night, place it on your bedside table, and you will return to this place. Goodbye, Beauty. I remember nothing of the events immediately after Beast placed the ring on my finger, except the sensation of suddenly feeling free and flying towards the love of my father. Suddenly, I was at the cottage in my bedroom with my sister Rowanna. <sighs> I didn't mean to frighten you, Rowanna. What are you doing here? You're meant to be dead. I've come to see Father. I dreamt he was ill. He is 
ill thanks to you. We've had to look after him. Oh, no. When he never heard from you, Father assumed you were dead and blamed himself. I, I couldn't write. Beast wouldn't let... Well, you better go and see him. He might have died overnight. Is it really you, Beauty? Yes, Father. Beast allowed me to come to you for, for a short time. Ah, oh, that was kind of him. I thought you were dead, dear Beauty. I'm something to live for again now. Oh. We should let him sleep. It's been a terrible ordeal for him. For him? Julius and I've had to put up with every second of it. Dashed in, in c c c c c convenient, I, I, I say. Inconvenient? How dare Rowanna and Julius speak like that about their poor father? Selfish, spoiled brats, the pair of them. Oh! Where on earth could that have come from? Lord! Beauty! Beauty! Come quickly! What is it? Mary! Oh! To beauty, with the deepest, most meaningful love, beast. Oh, fabulous! Oh! Whose is it? Beauty's. The beast sent it to her. Did I tell you how much I missed you while you were away, dear, dear beauty? No. And how much I've always loved you. Oh, thank you, Rowanna. <laughs> I love you, too. If there's anything in the trunk you'd like, please take it. What's mine is yours. Is it? <laughs> They're all back in here. He obviously meant them to be only for you, Beauty. Only for Beauty? How beastly! <laughs> ah, beautiful. And I never thought I'd smell the scent of spring flowers again. But here I am. You've saved my life. A second time. Oh, Father. I feel as though I should be taking the blame for making you ill. <laughs> I'm so happy to see you well again. Well, that's two of us happy. You know, I could live in retirement quite cheerfully here. Money or no money. Except that you're not here and... Rowanna and Julius are bitterly unhappy. Oh, I know, Father. And it seems I can't give them any of Beast's gifts to cheer them up. He forbids it. I'm not looking forward to you going back, Beauty. You know that, don't you? Perhaps Beast will let me come again, as long as I return within the time. It's quite simple, Julius. She won't go back on time. She... she... she, she w w won't? No. Beast will strike her dead for that. Put an end to her perfect life. All those beautiful clothes and priceless jewels. While you and I rot here in the countryside with our penniless, stupid father! I, I know. He, he can't, can't even p -p play p backgammon properly. Come on, Julius. I've got an absolutely fatal idea for beauty. Have you? Oh, g goody! On the fifth morning, something very strange began happening. Beauty? Dear Beauty, I found some fresh farm eggs for breakfast. I've poached them for you. Oh, thank you, Rowanna. You've never... No, I've never apologized for my appalling behavior towards you, dear Beauty. Can't tell you how truly sorry I am. ba 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 ba, -ba beauty p p posies uh, I, I picked them for you. 
Oh, oh, awfully sorry for being a, a pig in that towards you. <laughs> Thank you, Rowanna and Julius. Uh, I can't tell you how much your lovely words mean to me. We promise never to be nasty to you again, beauty. Don't we, Julius? A absolute j jolly p p p promise. For the next three days, my family seemed more content and at peace than I had ever known it to be. Rowanna and Julius had suddenly begun behaving like perfect angels towards both Father and me. A little more salt, Father dear. Uh, thank you, uh, Rowanna. I say, this is what I always hoped for. No amount of money could ever buy the family happiness we've experienced in the past few days. Oh, if only your late mother was here to see it. And if only you weren't leaving us tonight, Beauty. I must go, Father. I gave my word to Beast. But you can't go, Beauty. We're all getting on so famously. It would ruin it if you went back. P -p -p please stay, Beauty. Uh, for, for Father's sake, at least. Please, Beauty. I'm sure Beast wouldn't mind if you stayed just a little longer, my dear. I was caught in a terrible dilemma between loyalty to my family and my promise to Beast. I, I loved my family, but I had begun to miss Beast. I imagined I heard him calling me, reminding me of him. On the eighth night, place the ring on your bedside table and you will return. We'll return. And then I heard my dear, dear father's words again. No amount of money could ever buy the family happiness we've experienced, Beauty. We've experienced, Beauty. We've experienced, Beauty. I, I chose my family and hoped Dear Beast would understand and, and forgive me. <laughs> As I slept that night, the mysterious face came to me for the last time. Listen, dear beauty. Hear the voice of Beast, alone in his pain at his castle tonight. Oh, no! Beauty! No! Catastrophe, beauty. There is catastrophe. sleep again that night, knowing that I had, by wickedly breaking my promise, caused Beast great pain. His pain became my pain, a pain that was more than I could bear. At that moment, I realized I had come to love him. Suddenly, I knew no more except a sense of deep foreboding and the sensation that, again, I was flying. Please, Beast, speak to me. 
beauty? Yes. It is me. <laughs> when you did not come last night, beauty, my heart burst with grief and pain. No, beast. I did not know. I... my family, I... Oh! Hush, <laughs> beauty. I die happy. Now that I have seen you again, heard your sweet voice. No! You will not die. I will marry you and mend your broken heart. Oh, beast. I have grown to love you. Save my life, beauty. Uh, I... Beast, where, where is he? I am Beast. You? I was a prince. An evil spirit placed a curse on me that could only be broken by love from someone as sweet and pure of heart as you, beauty. Someone who could see the true face of love behind the mask of my ugliness. True face of love? My God. Dream! Oh. You were being guided by my kindly guardian spirit because only you could save me. Beauty, will you marry me? Oh, yes, my prince. I will marry you. Aftermath, my prince restored the fortune to my father, who returned to our city home with Mary. But there was one condition, that Rowanna and Julius remain behind at the country cottage for one whole year, as punishment for the unworthy way they had behaved. Oh, b b b b b bother. 